So this is for Canfield. And I am just going to show you these tolerances. And I did it from another angle. I'll probably send both videos. So um, I do have a 160 mil SRAM rotor, okay? I'm using a, an FSA wheel. It's a 27.5 wheel. Um, we're and I, again, the tire fits and everything, the clearances are all, are all okay. The wheel is 100% straight on the axle. I've had this wheel on two other bikes and not had any issues with it. Um, the rotor is installed correctly. I've actually had a 180 mil when I first started this. And um, I had the adapter and everything and I had, I had this caliper up on set adapter and I just couldn't get it to stop rubbing on the, on the actual rotor. So now um, what I did was I thought, well, maybe if I, if I drop it down to a 160 and I go a little bit closer to the frame and, and I don't have, you know, a solid inch and a half of spacers, maybe I could tighten this caliper up and get it a little bit closer to the tolerances. But if you look at this, just when I, just when I hook this caliper over the rotor, right? If you can see just how far off that is, how that doesn't line up. Um, it's not as bad in the back, but I mean, literally the caliper mount splits, splits the mounting holes right in half. And what's happening is, is any way I try to mount this, this caliper on here, it's pulling this out and it's rubbing on the rotor. And um, I do have, I do have an older Avid brake that I have on the Nimble 9. And again, this is the Yelly, by the way, this is the Yelly Screaming we're talking about here. Uh, brand new out of the box. Uh, I do have another brake that I could try on here, but it doesn't seem to really like this Guide RC. And again, this is not a cheap brake set. Um, I actually have a couple of other brakes. I, I have um, a, a set of level ultimates also, which would be interesting. So what I might do is pull one of those calipers out and make another video and drop this on and see if the tolerances are similar. So um, again, I called a, uh, the local bike shop that I deal with, which is XHL Bikes uh, over here in Phoenix. And I asked if they, they had heard of anything um, like a rotor shim. In other words, shim the rotor out so that it actually allows me to pull the caliper over and line it more up with the posts so I can put some spacers in here and run this. I mean, I guess at that point, if I get it to line up, I could put the 180 back on and run at 180. But I thought I would try caliper diameter as part of the process of eliminating um, any of the issues. The other issue, and again, hopefully you're patient enough to watch the video here, um, cause I ramble. I have a tiny bit of play. There's just the slightest bit of play when I'm wiggling this crank like this. So um, this is a Canfield 150 millimeter set um, with your standard Canfield bottom bracket that you sent. I'm gonna walk around here. Here's the here's the poor Nimble 9 that had its wheel stolen off of it. I'll be dropping some 29s back on that. So yeah, I can you can't really hear it click, but when I wiggle the crank, it has just the slightest bit of play. Now, this is a 73 mil bottom bracket, so I did mount this GXP straight onto the frame on each side, which is same spacing I'm used to, right? 73 mil. Um, I did tighten the bottom bracket down correctly. I got a one millimeter GXP spacer in behind the chain ring here to eliminate, there was just a little bit of slide without any spacer, so I, I was able to find one of those. And then what's interesting is it actually mentions a spindle spacer in the crank box, but I didn't find one. What I found was two bottom bracket spacers that would actually go on the inside of the bottom bracket pieces right up against the BB shell. Um, so I didn't use either one of those on either side. 
it looks like we have pretty good chain line clearance here. So this is, an, again, this is a 28 tooth oval um, SRAM style that I put on there. So again, just walking around behind here, showing you, this is a standard garden variety wheel, 148. And um, the wheel is totally straight. And let me pull this, get this out of the way here, just so I can show you that the wheel is spinning freely. The wheel isn't tweaked. There's nothing wrong with the hub. It's definitely the correct spacing for the for the rear mainstays for that for that rear tolerance. And again, when I try to put this caliper on, just to show you kind of from the other angle here. So there we have it. We should be able to just Stick that right over the rotor, like so, right? These should be much closer. So if you can see where that lines up, and you can see actually the front one, how far off that is. So again, this wheel's been on the Nimble 9, this has also been on my Fuse, this, this rear wheel, and I know that there's not really a problem with the alignment of that rotor or anything, so I'm just sort of curious. And you know what, since I've already rambled on, I guess how am I gonna send this video if it's any longer? So let me do this. Let me open up that other brake box and I'll drop another type of a rotor on here just to double check.